Hello and welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley and once again it's idioms time. All right, time to learn some English idioms. Uh, this week we're kind of looking at our idioms through the lens of metaphor, so to speak. He says metaphorically. <laughs> okay, um, today our basic metaphorical theme is the overriding concept that organizations are like gardens. Um, basically, uh, we'll see how that, that theme kind of plays out, um, obviously using some key words that have to do with gardens to talk about organizations idiomatically. Okay, uh, as usual, students will take turns uh, doing a number of exercises uh, in some material which I will share and as we go along we'll kind of talk about the idioms a little bit clarifying the meaning thinking of similar idioms or maybe opposite idioms um, positive negative and also situational use of the idioms anyway more idioms today plenty of room in the class for anybody out there in Verbalink, come on in and join me and we'll learn some idioms. Uh, hello, Heidi. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Okay. Heidi, as we get closer mm -hmm. to the end of things, I have a feeling you and I will be the only ones in class. <laughs> 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 It'll be you and me sitting here together. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Uh, let's get started. I'm going to share some material. And uh, when we're looking at these overall metaphorical ideas, all right, we're drawing metaphors to gardens today. So um, we're going to start out looking at some literal meanings of words that uh, have to do with gardens and gardening. Um, okay. So, so that we can get a kind of a visual uh, visualization of the idiom when it when we get to them here. Uh, we're first going to look at the literal meanings of these garden related words. So um, here we go, starting with sentence number one. Pick a word from the uh, bold italics. Words up here to fill in the blank. So, Heidi, no, go ahead. I don't yep. know the name for it. It has a glass house. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> do you know? Uh, do you know an idiom about glass houses? Actually, not an idiom. Glass it, house. You shouldn't uh, yeah, throw yeah. the stone to the glass house. Uh, it's very yeah, close. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And this is actually kind of a parable or, or a, a saying, I guess. People who live in glass houses should not throw stones. Do you know what that means? Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, no secret. Like uh, mm, uh, celebrity though. Well, um, the uh, well, the idea is if you whatever. Well, to give us like a specific example, if you're cheating on your wife, mm -hmm. so uh, then don't talk about other people who are cheating on their wives because you live in a glass house. You don't have much defense against, you know, that cri criticism. Uh, you're doing right, the same thing. Uh, you shouldn't throw that stone to the glass house or something. Before I heard about that, like idiom or something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a parable, I was saying. And, mm -hmm. and I, wrote it, I wrote it in the verbling chat here. Hopefully you can see it. People who live in glass houses should not throw stones. Oh, okay. And the idea is that they're vulnerable for the... They're vulnerable to criticism or something, so they, you know... Don't criticize other people when you are criticizable. I'm not, not sure if that's a word. 
Anyway, okay, greenhouse, all right, that's the small building where you grow flowers, also called a hothouse, and very commonly a hothouse when uh, when they're marketed, um, hothouse flowers, hothouse roses, hothouse tomatoes, you might see in the supermarket, meaning that they're grown in inside gardens frequently made out of glass. Okay, uh, Nan has joined us. Hello, Nan. Nan, are you there? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Nice Hi. to meet you. How are you? I'm, I'm fine. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Terrific. Okay, Nan, we're going to be looking at some idioms that are kind of related to gardens, but first we're looking at some literal meanings of garden-related words. Could you please read sentence number two and okay. fill in the blank? Before farmers can plant a crop, they first have to um, dig, uh, dig the fields. Well, what is, uh, well, yes, that's true, but it's kind of a specific type of digging. Mm. Root out. Well, that's also a kind of digging. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we're getting closer, but no, that's not exactly it. When they make long rows to put the seeds in, mm. long like trenches to put... To place the seeds, how, how do they how do they make those? No, we're looking for a verb. Um, plow. There it is. Okay, plow. Notice the spelling with the gh. Uh, American English, it's not even really close to that. It's pronounced exactly the same, but in American English, it's p l o w. Plow. Yeah. Plow. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, plow, by the way, does it snow where you live, Nan? Now, I'm now living in Japan. Okay. Does it snow where you live? Um, well, it only has snowed one time this winter. <laughs> okay. So you're somewhere more south. All <laughs> right. I got you. All right. Um, Okay, if it snows, or it snows a lot, you then people plow the snow. You have big trucks that have a big blade in the front of the truck, and they push the snow. That's also plowing. They plow the snow. But farmers plow the garden. They usually, I guess, drag something behind a tractor, and that makes those long rows or trenches for the rows of food. Okay. All right, um, Ken has joined us as well. Hi, Ken. Yes, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Great. Doing well. Thanks a lot. Um, anyway, welcome to the class. I'm going to throw you right in with sentence number three, please. Great. You can find a flower at the end of the blank of a plant. Mm. Stem of the plant. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, a, a stem of a tree. What is a stem of a tree? Karen? Um, kind of pipe pipe part of the tree. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's not. We don't call it a pipe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, stem. <laughs> that's pipe-like part. It is pipe-like. That's yeah. true. You can carve a pipe out of wood. <laughs> But, okay, it's called the uh, trunk. Trunk, okay. All right, when you get into bigger plants, uh, like trees, then it, the stem is now referred to as a trunk. But mm -hmm. basically, yeah, it's it's the central pipe-like part, uh, part of the plant. That's correct. Um, did you know, Ken, that a wine glass has a stem? Oh, yes, wine glass has it, yes. Yes, that long, thin part that attaches the glass to a base. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay. Uh, Heidi, mm -hmm. number four. 
children love to build houses in the uh, branches of trees. Yes. Do children do this in Japan? Yes. Build tree houses? Yeah. Tree houses, yes. Yeah. Did you ever have one when you were yeah, a kid? Yeah. Ah, cool. All right. <laughs> Lucky you. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I love tree houses. I'd like to live in a tree house. <laughs> Why not? Okay, Nan, number five. If if you want your flowers to grow, must uh, to grow, you must first get rid of the. Mm. Branches. Mm, well, if there's okay. branches, but hopefully there's not branches. Uh, no, we're talking about in the ground. In the ground. Yeah, okay. they, they choke okay. in flowers. The so, weeds. The know. weeds, that's it. <laughs> right. And the weeds take up the nutrients in the in the water and maybe the sunlight so yeah you remove the weeds uh, what's the verb Nan for removing the weeds what is the word that's a verb which means remove the weeds dig out uh, no it was, a, it was a trick question I'm very tricky Nan you, it's the word is weed. <laughs> oh, un unweed. <laughs> no, it's not unweed, just weed. So if you weed the oh. garden, to weed the garden, that means you're removing, you're removing the weeds. So weed is actually both a noun and a verb. Yeah, you weed the garden. That's it. Alrighty, uh, Ken, number six. Um. Potatoes, berry, wheat, and a uh, berry, wheat, and corn are all types of crops. Yes, they are very good. Uh, crops, basically any plants that human beings eat, um, are crops, uh, especially if they if they grow them intentionally. You don't really, if you go pick wild mushrooms in the forest. We wouldn't really consider the wild mushrooms you go find as crops because we didn't actively try to grow them. All right. Heidi, number seven, please. You use a spade to dig the garden. Okay. That's very straightforward verb there. Uh, okay. Heidi, if I use it as a noun, a dig, I went to the dig. There is a dig out in the field. What am I probably talking about? Noun. Uh, As a noun, yeah. Noun. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Oh. If I'm talking about a dig as a noun, I'm probably talking about some kind of scientific dig, like archaeological dig or maybe a dig for dinosaur bones. Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're trying to discover something. Somehow scientific related. When when we say a dig, they're not talking about any old hole in the ground. They're probably talking about some kind of science to find whatever fossils or caveman tools or whatever all right uh, Nan number uh, seven I mean eight sorry number eight to keep a tree healthy you must cut away the branches okay that seems counterintuitive to me <laughs> all right do you know okay once again Nan I got you again Cutting the branches, what is the verb? Oh. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. gotcha again. Um, Branchy, branch. Yeah, nice try. It's a, <laughs> it's a double trick. I got you twice. No, it's a totally different verb, to prune. You, you prune a bush or you prune a tree, you cut away some of the branches. 
Yeah. Uh, that's it. Is it right, branches? I think. Is it right? Get wood because. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Used. Did we already use branches? No, we didn't. Uh, yeah, we did. We branches have, of the truth. Uh -huh. You're right. Okay. Well, uh, well, it's a happy mistake anyway because I got to introduce the verb prune, which, by the way, um, is used idiomata uh, idiomatically sometimes. If you're pruning your staff, that means you're laying off people uh, in your company um, uh, in order to save money or cut costs or for whatever reason. So prune is actually used idiomatically. You prune costs, okay? Especially when it comes to business, we, we talk about pruning, pruning staff, pruning costs, like that. So uh, Heidi, you are right. We picked the wrong answer. However, it was a happy accident. Deadwood, okay, well. All right, we're going to get to that idiomatic meaning in a little bit. All right, thank you for correcting us there. Uh, Ken, number nine. Trying to root out a large bush or tree is one of the most difficult things to do in a garden. Yeah, it is. Um, Ken, have you ever attempted to remove a tree? Uh, yeah, it's difficult and almost yeah. Yeah, it, if it is large, it's it's rooted deep, so yeah, it's almost impossible. You can you can use heavy equipment to pull it out, or you can burn it out. Mm -hmm. Some people use dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> well, here in the well, Philippines, I've actually seen it. People using dynamite. There goes. I see. <laughs> That's a little severe, but yeah, it's really really difficult to do. All right, uh, Heidi, number 10. Uh, some fruit trees never flourish fruit. Mm, well, no. No? Uh, not quite. It's, it's, it's close. Close in meaning as well, but it's a, uh, we're looking for a verb that definitely goes strongly goes with the object noun fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea is they never have fruit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh No, no. Uh, there are the three what? Bear or flourish. <laughs> That's it. So you got <laughs> the only one left, bear. Yeah. Okay. Heidi, what is... Yeah, tricky question. I feel tricky today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Sorry. What is the past participle of bear? Past participle of bear? Yeah. Mm, bore, bone. That's it. You got it. I'm, I'm impressed. Very good. Bore is the past tense, and born is the past participle. When we talk, I was born mm. um, on November 6th, okay, that uh, was born, we're using the passive form of this verb. We, we kind of forget it because we always, or almost always, use the passive form when we, we're talking about being born and all that. Mm -hmm. So we tend to forget that this is actually the verb as it would appear in an active sentence. Um, right. So, bear fruit, very, very strong co-location. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, Nan, number 11. Some plants by the sea while others hit it. <laughs> okay. Again, we've only got two words left. So 50-50. Okay, a flourish. There you go. What does that mean, they flourish? A flourish uh, means uh, growing, growing up, just living. Yeah. Living and growing, but um, it's a little more than that. It's, it means that they're 
very healthy, growing <laughs> very quickly. Okay. If your children are flourishing, they're doing great in school, they're really, really healthy, um, they're happy, they've got friends, all of that, they're flourishing, okay? So there you go, your, your children can flourish, your business can flourish, plants can flourish. Kind of a weird example here, I, but I, I, do, I just want to point out, you know, they're talking about plants hate it. That may seem weird, of course, plants or no plants that I have ever met are, are exactly over emotional. <laughs> I rarely see plants show emotion. But as strange it is as it is, if you think about it, it is fairly common to actually say, Oh, the plants love it in the sun, the plants hate it. We do say that in English. Okay, Ken. Last uh, flowers which bloom year after year are bear plants. Or no. Beer. No. No. Plow. No. <laughs> There's only one left. A fl uh, fl flourish? Uh, it contrasts ones which one bloom. Which only no. Plant Look at the ones which bloom for only one year and then they die. Are called annual. annuals. Annual. So, uh, mm -hmm. kind of the opposite or contrast to annual. Uh, per, per, perennial. 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 That's it. Yes. Um, usually we use this adjective to talk about plants. However, it can be used. To talk about other things, for example, the New York Yankees are a perennial favorite to win the World Series. Year after year, they're favored to win the World Series, which is sad but true. Um, so it can be used for other things. It, remember that it's not a noun, it's an adjective. So, yeah. Okay, now we've got a lot of literal meanings of garden words under our belt, so to speak. Time to uh, look at how we use them idiomatically. Please fill in the following verbs into the sentences below. These verbs here are Heidi number one. Hmm, Gary, I can't find the last year's sales figure. Have you got have you got a minute? Can you Hold them out for me. Can you dig out? That's it. Okay. That's right. All right. Dig them out. Sometimes we might hear dig them up as well. Okay, Heidi. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the idea here? Mm, um, fine. Fine out? Yeah, it's fine. And there's a that, that's it, pretty straightforward. Fine, but there's a there's an inference or an idea when we use this idiom that they're mm, either a hard to find or b um, there's some difficulty in finding them for some reason, whatever whatever reason, um, especially physically. All right. I don't know if your house looks like mine, but if I wanted to dig out my bowling shoes out of the closet, I would have to remove half of the closet in order to, because I haven't seen my bowling shoes in a year. <laughs> I would have to dig them out. Literally, I would have to remove things. I, I think you get the idea. How's your closet look, Heidi? Do you, would you have to dig something out of the closet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. All right. So you can picture that idea. Okay. Very good. Uh, Nan, number two. I'll tell you why we've got problems in this organization. All our problems mm, stem, stem from bad communication. We need to speak to each other far more. Oh, there you go. Okay, stem from is the idiom. What does that mean, Nan? It 
it means um, comes from. That's it. That's exactly what it means. Those two phrases mean exactly the same thing. Stem from, comes from. Exactly. Very good. Uh, and uh, I don't. The the uh, stems from comes from is a little more informal. Stems from a little bit more formal. You frequently will see stems from in academic writing or journalism, newspaper articles, things like that. Uh, research papers, doctors will write how a disease stems from a certain type of mosquito or something like that. Uh, can, number three. We can't go on. <clears throat> Browning more and more money into advertising. When people don't want uh, our products, we need new products and new need them first. Okay. Okay. Plowing. All right. Plowing. That's it. Plowing. All right. Uh, again, American English spells it P-L-O-W, not O-U-G-H. But in any case... Ken, what else can you plow money into? <laughs> uh, gamble. Oh, uh, well, possibly. Um, yeah, but we, we probably wouldn't use the idiom because we usually use the idiom plowing money into something. We're investing money. Okay. We expect to get something out of it. I guess, you know, I guess if you gamble, you expect to get something out of it. But. More large money, probably. Larger money. Yeah. Well, it's very common, for example. More organized um, money. <laughs> well, you plow money into a house. You buy a house and, oh, man, okay, you realize, oh, I need, oh, we're running out of water. I'm going to have to dig a well. Oh, I dig a well. Oh, I realize that these septic system, the sewage system needs to be re redone so you plow more money into the house and you, mm -hmm. yeah or your car cars are infamous for plowing your money you fix one thing and another thing breaks mm -hmm. if you buy a used car for example mm -hmm. I keep plowing money into the car I just need to buy a new one okay something like that it's common um, Ken okay also idiomatic also kind of has to do with digging. Uh, what is an idiomatic name for a house? Usually a house, but maybe something else where you spend a lot of money. Uh, uh, you keep plowing money into it. It's called a what? Do you know? In the, to the house. Building a house. Yeah, or fixing. Fixing a house. Money pit. You got it. Uh, because I know the film called Money Pit. Right. Yeah. I was going to say this was a this was a bad movie that everyone has seen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Really, not a very good movie, but everyone's seen this movie. I don't know why. Yeah. Anyway, exactly what I was thinking of. I was also thinking. I, I thought of the movie. Okay. Heidi, number four. Too many people in the organization have been doing the same thing. For too long, we need to weed out the weaker ones and retrain our best staff. Okay. What are we going to do with the weaker ones? Remove. Yes, we are. Correct. So, uh, as I was saying earlier, okay, weed out the weaker ones. Um, you might hear prune out the weaker ones as well uh, okay exactly the same idea you're removing them that's it um, or you also might hear same meaning we need to cut the deadwood same thing um, okay weed out some people weed out the weaker ones um, if you need to cut the deadwood it means the people who basically aren't any benefit to the organization or the company um, cut and it's cut out when you say cut out not just cut the deadwood but cut out the deadwood all right all of those things removing weeds branches deadwood all of those have a similar meaning used idiomatically getting rid of people that 
are not productive. Nan, number five, please. Okay, we are in the middle of a recession. That means we all have to cut back back on all on all unnecessary expense. That way we may survive till better times. Yeah, that's it exactly. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, yeah, cut back expenses. Uh, what is something else, Nan, that you might cut back or sometimes cut back on frequently? Cut back on. Um, oh. What else might you cut back on? I I don't know. Mm. Well, if you're on a diet. Nan, you might cut back on fatty foods. You might cut back on red meat because yeah, you're okay. on, a, a, on a diet, for example. So frequently it's used about money, especially expenses, but you can cut back on other things. You can cut back on alcohol or something like that. Cut back on... Um, okay, vacation days. So you can cut back on a lot of things. Uh, okay, Ken, number six. I'm pleased to say that business is starting to flourish again after a difficult two years. Profits are up, turnover is up, and morale is improving. Okay, well, we kind of already talked about flourish. So, yeah, all right, business is flourishing, I think I already mentioned. All right, um, Ken, hang on a second. Profits are up. Now, we all know what that means. What does this mean? Turnover is up. Turnover. <clears throat> Turnover. Maybe it, uh, kind of the, <clears throat> the, the cycle of stock and product produce. No, close, yeah, yes. It's basically saying sales are up. Okay, you're, more money's coming in from because yes, the cycle is either going faster or, or you're producing more, so you're selling more. More money's coming in. However, mm -hmm. just to throw a monkey wrench in here, in American English, this can be very confusing as business ter uh, terminology because in America, when I say turnover, I mean something completely different. In American business, um, you know, in American business, we would just say sales are up. Pretty straightforward. Turnover in American English refers to the the cycle of losing staff and retraining new staff. So mm -hmm. turnover is a bad thing because it costs money to train new people. Mm -hmm. So it's an expense. It's not not a good thing. I yeah. See. So we talk about a business being high turnover, meaning that employees do not tend to stay there. They work there a year or two, and then they go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It has high turnover. Um. Okay. And what is uh, morale? Morale is improving. Morale is maybe working ethic or something. Okay. Uh, no, no. Motivation. Motivation. Yeah. Motivation, feeling good about where you where you work, feeling positive, um, a general feeling of having a positive attitude in the workplace. Mm -hmm. We can do this. We can get it done. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite, I worked in a place that had written on the wall, on a plaque on the wall, um, this uh, expression, this saying, I guess. This warning, I don't know. Um, beatings will continue until morale is improved, <laughs> <laughs> which I quite enjoyed. I always thought this was very funny. Okay, it's a joke. <laughs> uh, all right, um, Heidi, number seven. We've published adult fiction for the past fifty years, but we are planning to. Um, branch out into a couple of new areas, probably children, work, and uh, travel. Okay, and um, 
some businesses have branch offices, right? Uh, Heidi, what kind of businesses sometimes mm -hmm. have? Do, can you, uh, do you know what kind of businesses have branch offices? Mm, you know? For example, very big companies, uh, to the, no, Honda or Sony had a lot of branch of companies on the outside. That's, well, that's true. And then that, Congr conglomerate. Sorry, again. Con conglomerate, no. What's conglomerate? That? Oh, conglomerate. conglomerate. Yeah. Okay, conglomerate companies have branch companies. That's right. But they're branch companies. They come off of the big, big, big company, and then the smaller companies. That's right. They're a branch. Then there's branch offices, like a bank will have. You know, the main bank in the big city and then smaller cities will have branch offices. Okay, it's the same bank, same business, same company, but a smaller office. Um, insurance agencies have branch offices. Um, not to be mistaken with like McDonald's, which is, a, which is a, we don't call McDonald's, oh, this is a branch, I'm going to the, the branch in the West Mall. We wouldn't say that. I, I'm okay. Um, these are. This is a franchise business, so we don't really consider them as a, like a branch. It's a little bit different. Japanese McDonald's had a big deficit the last year. They did. How they, did they man? How did they manage that? Um, How did they do that? Before uh, in the news, uh, at the time of last year or two years ago, uh, it's a news from China. Chinese company uh, treating uh, the bad, bad meat for, Ooh. yeah, it's already rotten, rotten meat, a uh -huh. different, like blue, <laughs> on the uh, uh, conveyor. Ooh. It's for Japanese McDonald's, they said. So, really? <laughs> the, Customers almost all zero. <laughs> interesting. Uh, okay, that's very interesting. In the United States, and I can't say about other parts of the world, I don't know. But in the United States, for example, McDonald's owns everything, every part of the process. They own the farm in Brazil or and and or Argentina, usually in South America. So it's McDonald's farm. They process the meat in a McDonald's processing house. They ship it on a McDonald's ship, and it goes in a McDonald's truck to the different McDonald's. So there's no outsourcing at all, which, of course, cuts their costs. And basically, no one in the United States worries whatsoever because it's such a closed system. So that's very interesting. That makes me worried now because I live in the Philippines and I never really considered. <laughs> mm, boy, oh God, where are they getting their meat? Not that I eat at McDonald's very often, a few times a year maybe. Still, that was interesting. Thank you for that information. Thank you for making me nervous. Uh, Nan, number eight. Okay, uh, 2,000 replies this week. Our promotional campaign is beginning to flourish fruits at last. Not uh, flourish fruit. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Um. <laughs> I, I was going to say pick the verb, but they're all verbs. Um. Okay, the idea that, uh, all right, it produces, basically, <laughs> produces young. Uh, okay, well, let's, bear. Bear. Bear fruit. All right. Bear fruit. A, a, an apple tree bears fruit. It's the, again, it's the verb born. It gives birth to fruit is what you're saying, is what we say, which is actually normal in English. But used metaphorically, it's a very common idiom to express the idea that you have invested time, money, effort, research, whatever, 
Um, you've invested in something and it's starting to pay off. You're getting something in return. Something bears fruit. And it can be literally anything. It doesn't have to be just about business. Um, oh, dropping hints to mom and dad about buying me a new smartphone is starting to bear fruit. I saw them looking at the smartphones online yesterday. It could be literally anything if you've invested time and effort in doing it. If it's looking like it's going to work or you're going to get something in return, then it's bearing fruit. Okay, here's another set. One more time, basically the same thing. Mix and match. Ken, number one. If we want to be more efficient, we have to get rid of the blank in middle of middle in middle management. Eh, more efficient. We have to get rid of dead boot. That's it. Um, okay, we have to get rid of the dead wood. We have to weed out the weak ones, we have to weed out the bad employees, we have to do some pruning on the staff, we have to prune the staff. Um, okay, uh, very similar, maybe related in business, when you trim the fat, you trim out the things you don't need, but usually that refers to any costs, not just, not just staffing, but any kind of costs that you can cut down on. You trim the fat. No more free coffee for employees. We're trimming the fat. So all of these are kind of related. Uh, and I Okay, just because I thought of it instantly when I read this example sentence, um, because this is a frequent problem, I thought of the word I started looking for the word at first. We have to get rid of the log jam in middle management. Um, okay, a log jam, or sometimes we say bottleneck. There's a bottleneck. Some part of a process that slows things down is a log jam or a bottleneck. Again, it has nothing to do with staffing. Um, just fits the sentence. So anyway, I thought I'd share it. And what is middle management? Uh, well, pretty much you might be able to guess it. I mean, not high-level management, the CEO and the vice president, and not the maybe low-level management, which would be like a team leader or something mm -hmm. like that, but somebody who's, uh, okay, assistant director in charge of uh, – four different teams. He's in the middle. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Heidi, number two. Our subsidiary in Papyrus and offshoot of our main company, Malaysia. Okay. Very similar. Very, excuse me. Extremely similar to branch. Mm. Uh, a branch is is to a tree as an offshoot is to a flower. Uh, if, if, if a flower has shoots, it starts growing another plant. So, kind of the same idea, basically. All right. All right. Oh, yeah, right. That's the dead giveaway. Grammatically, it has to start with a vowel sound. So, yeah, okay. Dead giveaway there. All oh, right. Um, okay, uh, Nan, number three. We are planning to relocate in Scotland, but the up uprooting process will be difficult for many of the workplace. Yes, very good. All right. So, very much related. Nan, what does it mean if you put down roots? Put down roots. Yeah. Down roots. Down roots. Put, put down roots uh, somewhere. 
you, you put down roots somewhere, what does that mean? Mm. Plow. Uh, <laughs> Not exactly. If you if you have, you know, well, if you have trees with roots, the trees don't go anywhere, and they're hard to move. We talked about how hard it is to remove roots. Mm. Okay, so if you put down roots in your community, you move to a new community and you put down roots. Yeah, you join a club. Your chi your children go to the school. You start going to the local church. You become involved in some of the civic affairs. All right, you're, that's putting down roots. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you buy a house. Okay, that obligates you're paying back the bank. So you're basically making yourself stuck to that place. Like communicate, or socialize. Mm, yeah. That's right, but other things too. Um, you know, investing money into the community, buying a house. You know, that that means you're kind of stuck there. You're putting down roots. So yeah, off many social aspects. Absolutely, yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. All right. So uproot is the opposite. Removing the roots is, and they're talking about how difficult it is. It is to do. When we talk about um, migrants, immigrants coming from uh, Syria, we, you'll often hear the word uproot. They've been uprooted from their normal lives, and basically they're fleeing the war. Very common word to see relative to this type of situation. You're almost guaranteed when you read an, uh, an article about immigration from Syria to see this verb, uproot. Uh, Ken, number four. Our local business college manage, manages to produce an excellent uh, <laughs> crop. <laughs> yeah. Like, crop of what? Crop of people. Okay. Stuff, right. maybe. Yeah. Okay. That that might be that might be suitable for employment. That's it. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. Off. All right. Well, it's pretty good. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Of keen young potential managers. Oh, all right. It says. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Um, often said about. Uh, okay. The the pool of possible workers or said about educating edu uh, educational programs whatever school training programs what have you um, we often use it for like if you work in a big company and you train 10 20 30 people at the same time I used to do training in a big company, and we would often refer to our class as, oh, it looks like a pretty good crop. This crop looks pretty good. Um, or maybe the opposite. <laughs> what a terrible crop of students. What a terrible crop of employees. Where did they find these people? Anyway. Heidi. Yeah. Uh, okay, number five, please. The speed work, work of ideas is essential in any business. Mm. No. No. Huh. This is an interesting one because it's not, it's not very common. I would not have expected you to hear this. Mm. It's kind of a weird idea. A little bit. Um. Okay. Uh, let me is try Glass to explain. House? Sorry. Glass house. No. Um, let me try to explain the idea they're trying to convey here. They're trying to give you the idea, all right, the idea that if we're all in business together, you know, the four of us in this group, I have part of an idea and I tell you and you build on my idea and that idea grows and then so Ken has a little bit he can add to that idea, make it better. We present it to Nan, and Nan has the final polishing, finishing touches. The idea is not just your idea or my idea or Ken's idea. We're kind of helping the idea grow. Cross-fertilization. That's it. Uh, 
<laughs> Very good. That's it. And this is the expression, cross-fertilization of ideas. It's extremely, well, it's pretty darn specific. I do not see this, this used very often. Sometimes in reference to scientific work, I, I've seen this idiom. It can be used about business. It's somewhat rare because it's very specific what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Nan, number six. We keep losing staff to firms who pay more, more than we can afford. It is a problem for firm of our size. Mm -hmm. In space of work. Look. No. Oh. <laughs> okay, I guess it's perennial. That's it. Um, so sometimes, literally, we mean year after year. The New York Yankees are a perennial favorite. Okay. Sometimes we mean we can be used for things that happen over and over and over again. Chronic. The word chronic comes to mind. It's a chronic problem for a firm of our size. It's a perennial problem. Chronic, when we use chronic, which in this case is used in exactly the same way, exactly the same meaning, chronic is definitely negative. It goes very well with problem. It would work very well in this sentence. Perennial, okay, New York Yankees are a perennial favorite. That's not exactly negative. So perennial is more neutral a word. Chronic is usually used in a negative sense, but they're used in exactly the same way. Ken, number seven. I did all the blank setting up the new department, but my boss got all the credit. I did all the mm, grass houses <laughs> setting up. No. No. Up, uprooting setting up. No. Basically, the idea is he did all the hard work. Mm. Off shot. No. What else? No, wait, what do you spade, think? Uh, spade work. Yeah, okay. What is spade work? Literally. Spade is a the, the cards, the spade. <laughs> okay. Not, well, y yes, it is. But a, another word for a spade is a shovel. Ah, uh, oh, I see. Shovel work. Okay. That, that's it. And that's hard work. Digging holes with a shovel is not easy work. That's the idea. Yeah. If you look at a spade on the cards, mm -hmm. can you notice the shape of it? It's kind of like the end mm -hmm. of a shovel. Huh? Yeah, ah, okay. I realize it now. Yeah, aha, uh -huh. light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So if he did all the spade work, that means he did all the hard work. We also sometimes say, might say, I did all the heavy lifting. Is used the same way, um, meaning you know the hard, the actual difficulty work, not subtle paperwork, but so it well it. All right, wait a minute. Let me say that another way. Sometimes actual physically heavy hard work, but sometimes just harder work, even if it's a more mental in nature. Um, it doesn't have to be physical work. It can be more mental work, but the more difficult part of the work, the heavy lifting or the spade work. The spade work um, has a little bit of a more meaning of the beginning work mm. you know I, I built the foundation when you put a foundation in for a house you have to dig a hole so it does have that idea of the the starting hard work yeah okay okie doke and Heidi <laughs> my favorite one <laughs> people who live in grass houses shouldn't throw stones that's it and how very circular. <laughs> we can come right back to where we started. Um, okay. All right. The idea. This is this is a P 
parable. This isn't a saying. It's all. It's an idiomatic, metaphorical parable. Parables are short stories or expressions that express an idea in a metaphorical way. Um, okay. Yeah, the idea is people who are vulnerable shouldn't uh, go around usually critiquing uh, other people. All right, we've only got minutes left. I don't know if we can do this. Let's try. Match the eight expressions with their meanings below. Nan, number one. Uh, dig out the sales figures. Find and remove. You got it. Perfect. Ken, number two. Uh, the problem uh, problem stem from from uh, where from uh, investor lab? Yeah, from from look for from 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 uh, from uh, origin uh, originate from for, yeah. from come from originate from okay. Yeah. All right, Heidi, number three. Flow of money into invest a lot. Yeah, too much. Not just a lot, but what is becoming clear to be too much. Nan, number four. Okay, wait out poor staff. Reduce poor staff. That's a nice way to say it. Reduce. Fire them. Okay. Anyway, you got it. That's right. Ken, number five. Cut back on expenses. Uh, find something. Uh, no. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Hmm? Okay. Uh, oh. oh, okay. Wait a minute. Uh, wait. Weed out poor staff is find and remove, actually. Must I'm sorry. <laughs> right. So cut back on expenses is reduce. Oh, oh yeah, meaning. Okay. Oh, yeah, meaning. The meaning is reduce. Okay. Sorry, I got things mixed up there a little bit. Uh, Heidi, number six. The business is flourishing, uh, successful. Indeed. Perfect. Nan, number seven. Branch out into new market, expand and diversify. Into new market. That's it. Diversify. 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 That's it. And finally, can pair fruit produce results. That's it. To produce results. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, we made it just in time. Uh, I'll be back in just a couple minutes with another class. Thank you very much. Great job today. You guys have a great day.